Hello chess friends and welcome to your out of chess channel and welcome to a very special game that I prepare for you today. Uh, today we see Yang Magnus Carlsen at the age of 15 playing really one of his most incredible attacks of, in his career and uh, when Magnus Carlsen was younger I think he played much 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 sharper chess than now these days uh, but I think it comes also with experience it also comes with uh, positional understanding I think uh, when it comes to positional understanding Magnus Carlsen is really the greatest player of all time. Uh, he doesn't have to basically play tactical chess because he finds always solid positions and then he squeezes you then he of course um, finds the best positional ideas but this game I wanted to show you because in this game uh, Magnus Carlsen played really really in a sharp tactical way really like Mikhail Tal uh, back in his uh, best year so his opponent was uh, Geir Sune Talax and also from Norway so let's check out now this game put your seatbelts on and enjoy in Magnus Carlsen as Mikhail Tal here so with the white pieces magnus opened with the move knight of three gear soon and taloxan uh, response was knight of six uh we have c4 taloxan's response was uh, the e6 and now f move d4 uh, we have now the move b6 and which becomes now of course the queen's indian defense we have now the fianchetto variation here by magnus taloxan continues with the nimzovich variation hitting the pawn on uh, c4 immediately and there are now many options you can play queen to b3 knight to d2 queen to c2 is also an option i myself like this approach also um with the move b3 Go, probably the game would transpose into similar ideas like in the catalan opening when for instance black is playing the move d5 so we'll reach i think similar similar uh tactical ideas like in the catalan opening we have now the move b5 and this move is um sideline that's very very often also played in top grandmaster level talax and is putting more pressure against this uh, weak pawn on c4. Magnus continues now with um, c takes b5, bishop to b5, and now after bishop to g2, Talaxen uh, locked out now uh, the long diagonal for the light school bishop. And what ba basically ba black is preparing now, <coughs> pardon me, as a strategic goal here is to somehow push the pawn on c5 and then continue the game after potential, I don't know, c takes d4 or d takes c5 with the powerful center, which is, I think, the normal idea of blacks here uh, in this Nimtsovich variation of the Queen's Indian defense. So is uh, black is trying to regain somehow the center of the board. Magnus continues with castle knight for b to d7 by Talaxen and now knight to c3, simply attacking the bishop on b5, bishop to a6. And now Magnus Carson um, played here really, really interesting idea. He played now the move rook to e1. He's preparing, of course, now the move e4, but the move e4 is quite risky when you think about it harder, because if e4 happens and a potential d takes e4, then uh, white could be left with an isolated d pawn. So Magnus risks now in the early opening stage to have uh, maybe a tiny little disadvantage in, 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 in the middle game. So the, the isolated d pawn is usually not such a huge problem. But I think uh, Magnus Carlsen realized that if he plays the move e4, that it would be very, very hard for black to play the move c5, the move that we have discussed, the move that black would love to play. I will explain you what I mean about this, because here I have move bishop to d6, uh, here by Talax, and Magnus continues with bishop to b2, controlling further the e4 square. Now we have casting, and now comes e4. And you see now, um, um, in a potential line, uh, for instance, if you play here d takes e4 and knight to e4, then it's very, very hard, of course, to play the move c5 because uh, then you're vulnerable here to some attacks by the light school bishop and uh, usually also here the bishop is hanging so you have to first of all react that's the issue you don't have time to play this move so here um, instead of this move e4 that Max Carson uh, played which is as I said a very really, really risky choice it's also a novelty a move that we haven't seen so far uh, no one played in chess history this move so Max Carson was very really aggressive already in the early stage of the game a more solid approach to the game is to play queen to c2 and then after potential c5 you see uh, this move c5 is again not possible because of the possibility of e4 uh, c5 after something like d takes e4 knight to e4 knight to e4 queen to e4 you may be trying i don't know something like c4 but look at this uh, now the pawn is taking white has gained a great activity if you pick up for instance this pawn here then the knight is coming into the game and suddenly there are many many weaknesses here uh, there's also the problem of the rook here on on a8 in a potential end game white would then continue also with the two versus one pawn majority on the 
queen side so very very interesting uh fact here that the move e4 in any of these lines after rook to e4 or queen to c2 uh, queen to e4 and similar stuff prevents black to play the normal c5 move that uh black is preparing in the first place great great so far opening theory by magnus carlson so here knight to e4 by talax and magnus takes d takes e4 and now rook to e4 and again i'm pointing out in any of these lines c5 doesn't really make sense because after d takes c5 bishop to c5 rook to g4 is coming for instance in the game and uh, tactically i think you're getting destroyed when the knight is coming into the game maybe the afterwards also the bishop it, the rook is under fire you have to lose maybe an extra tempo to get your rook out of this mess so really really interesting fact here that again the c5 move is not possible uh, here for talax and so uh, here bishop to b7 by talax and attacking now the rook magnus uh, gets the rook very really on f square so magnus doesn't retreat with his rooks he's uh, creating immediate immediate pressure here against this pawn on h7 because we have to also mention the knight is not so far on the most valuable score because on the night when the knight is on f6 then it's of course the key defender of the h7 score here talaxon continues with bishop to e7 and magnus believe me or not plays now another interesting choice which is really really funny here magnus plays rook to h3 and i'm not sure whenever i've seen a game like this when the rook is cornered already on the square h3 you can of course play it maybe in the later state of the game maybe in an end game you'll see probably the uh, the rook on h3 but not when so many pieces are on the board really really a strange square for for the rook and uh here magnus continues simply the pressure on the h while he says i played the rook lift now stay there and i'll try to do some mess here on the h file maybe a slightly better way the engine for instance suggests that you should play rook to f4 which is perfectly fine then after knight to f6 uh, knight to e5 and a couple of trades of pieces then you can go maybe into this line queen to f3 if uh, the queens are off the board then again white could launch an attack against this weak um a weak c uh c7 pawn against c5 would not be possible because of the activity on the c file so c this was the way to go, but Magnus Carlsen played here really aggressively with rook to h3. Talaxen continues with knight to f6, which is a good move, controlling now the h7 square. And now queen to e2. Magnus is trying to sneak in somehow with the queen here on light squares. We have now bishop to d5. Good move by Talaxen so far. This is a great move, I would say. It meets the idea how to play against an isolated pawn. When you play against an isolated pawn, then you want to fix uh, the square in front of this pawn. So you create a blockade. You're not allowing this pawn to be advanced in any, any of this line. So here, uh, after bishop to d5, we have now rook to e1 uh, by Magnus Carlsen, including now the last attacker into the game. That's how you play chess. You should, of course, attack with all of your pieces in the game. And now Talaxen... Uh, with a slightly better position, we have to say black is better uh, here because of the isolated D pawn by white. Uh, but also we have to mention the C7 pawn is also weak uh, by black. Here black had an immediate, immediate chance to maybe take over in the game with the potential A5 move. A5 is actually a huge threat because uh, A4 could happen. And now in order to stay in the game, you have to play bishop to C3 because now after something like, I don't know... Uh, uh a4 you could then maybe play somehow b4 and uh finally you would get out of this mess but then after a5 bishop to c3 then uh probably knight to e4 is going to happen that's the issue you will eventually i think lose lose the piece here uh, on d2 after queen to d2 and bishop to g2 king to g2 black is slightly better as i said nothing maybe spectacular here to play but again uh white is continuing now the game with two weaknesses while black is continuing the game only with one weakness in the, in the position so this was the way to go a5 at least making progress on the queen side uh here by black but talaxon played queen to b8 that's it is seemingly a good move because probably many of us would play this move because it, it again meets with this idea to stay connected to your bishop that's creating this blockade uh, around the square d5 the knight is protecting the square d5 the pawn is protecting the square d5 I would say 90% of players would play a similar idea like black. So it's really strange that this is really, really evaluated and there's a mistake here by black because he should have simply pushed a pawn here. Now Magnus Carlsen plays knight to e5, controls now uh, simply the center of the board with the knight and forces now a reaction by black. Talaxen continues with queen to b7. 
bishop to d5 which is now an equal game for both sides because uh, both players as i mentioned have now two weaknesses in the position d4 pawn and c7 pawn but talaxen unfortunately for him didn't react correctly it's really crazy that such a move um directs now the continuation of the game many of us i think again would play the move queen to d5 which is not good believe me or not this is not the way to proceed and here again white is slightly better for instance the suggested move is the move e takes d5 uh because after queen to d3 you could maybe play knight to e4 you cement your knight temporarily on a beautiful square and then you play f6 uh, then you want to play of course f6 and kick away simply uh here uh the knight from this very very unpleasant square and finally black i think uh, doesn't have to worry so much about this position but after queen to uh bishop to d5 queen to d5 has been played by Taliesin, and now magnus continued with an amazing plan with queen to c2 the idea about this move is of course to somehow deflect this knight from f6 uh from the uh, defense of the h7 square and then uh threatening some checkmates maybe with the queen and rook activity so here talaxen has some opportunities to defend he has to play now h6 this is the way to go but still it's very risky after bishop to c1 and i can always picture some uh, sacrifices around the square h6 that was the way to go but then you try maybe queen to d4 rook to h4 queen to d5 <coughs> knight is coming into the game you may be trying like this look at this white would can continue simply the attacking flow even in this line white should be better because then rook to c5 and then rook to c7 is going to happen again i would say a very very pleasant game uh here for for white but uh instead of this move h6 that could have saved maybe the game for a while uh Talaxen played now the move c5 and the move that we have discussed in the beginning is not working here now magnus carlson plays a brilliant knight to g4 uh which of course is trying to deflect now the knight as we mentioned from the defense of the h7 square and Talaxen plays now h6 which is not a good choice and from this point on the game is almost over here for black so here instead of this move h6 you have to play h5 then after knight to f6 bishop to f6 d takes c5 you are battling at least for a while then after something like this you can pick up this one this rook is coming into the game and uh, again rook to h5 i think much much better position uh here for white but after knight to g4 uh Talaxen played now the move h6 and now magnus plays a beautiful beautiful rook to e5 includes now the rook into the game he's trying now of course to maybe connect this rooks on the h file maybe get this rook somehow on the g file but now the game is very very complicated the defense for black it's almost game over uh, here for talax and queen to f3 he played and now knight takes h6 brilliant tactics and now the real mikhail tal comes out of magnus cars and look at this after knight to h6 g takes h6 rook to h6 the huge threat is now rook to g5 checkmate immediately so that's why talaxen has to play king to g7 and look how magnus carlson continues the attack he plays now a stunning rook to g5 forces now the the, the, the king to come to h6 he decoys now the uh, king to this beautiful square the queen is controlling the h7 square and now magnus plays the tricky bishop to c1 now you're there where i wanted you to have the uh, bishop uh, is now attacking indirectly of course the king and now huge threats are coming with rook to g4 and similar stuff even in some lines for instance let's see a bad move if you, if you play the worst move here i wanted to show you what's actually the threat here rook to g4 then rook to h4 is immediately is immediately attack me the queen is controlling again the g6 square great great move here rook to g5 by magnus allowing here talaxen to take and now bishop to c1 here rook uh, c takes d4 has been played by black and now magnus plays again this discovered attack forces now a reaction here by um by talaxen after queen to e3 he has to play now this move we have now rook to h4 knight to h5 and now a great follow-up here by magnus rook takes h5 king to h5 carlson doesn't take the uh, uh here the uh, queen immediately he first plays the check which is the correct way here to proceed that's the way to go because uh, the king um has to be uh cornered here to on our side of the board so you're playing sort of a king hunt and when you play the king hunt you should not allow your opponent to get the king again back into safety no so now queen to h7 in between check very very important here by magnus queen to g4 and now finally 
FTX E3. We have now Rook from A to C, Egg by Talaxin, and now a beautiful counter attack by Magnus. Uh, King to G2. This square is taken. Uh, you cannot deliver check uh, because the queen is controlling this, and now the huge, huge tactical threat is now the move H3. Rook to C1 by Talaxin, but now h3 by magnus king to g5 look at this beautiful check you have to go to uh to the f5 square g4 great follow-up and now queen takes d4 amazing checkmate in the center of the board so whew, this is epic this was a very very incredible game here by magnus really sharp sharp tactical sequence um from this beginning he decided to play tactically i would say from the beginning when he played the rook lift on e5 when he, the rook come and came on h3 magnus already said i will try somehow to do something in this position and he found he really, really immortal mortal tactic so this was uh, magnus carson slash mikhail tau today i hope that you enjoyed this game i really, really enjoyed it a lot this was uh really, really crazy crazy how magnus carson played at the age of 15 no one uh i think um, could 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 see this this tactical sequence like magnus uh unfortunately maybe for us magnus turned a little bit more into a positional player but he's as i mentioned uh, such a such a great positional player that he doesn't have to really change uh his uh his playing style because he sees of course tactics but his first idea in the beginning now these days is to have a solid position and then he's squeezing you he's playing sort of a ball constrictor style more than maybe sort of Mikhail Talwe but it was I think really really fun also sometimes you see the tactical Magnus Carson so okay I hope that you enjoyed this game if you want to see some other beautiful sharp attacking games like this check out our come to chess games and also our come to chess games play by computers and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course